here we're, we're probably going to um, end a little early but we have um, one more share before we have a sort of open discussion about reflections that Ruth will join us because um, we uh, what a rich day um, but I have one more um, share from from our friend Samir here from University of Maryland and the, the value I felt was starting the day with Janet and then ending the day with Samir who's a student of a student of of Maxine's gives you a sense of of momentum and generation and enthusiasm. I just met Samir when he wrote the Institute for the brief question about his dissertation. And we, I said, can I talk to you on the phone? And he had so much love and enthusiasm for Maxine. I said, you, <laughs> we have to tape this. So um, I wonder, David, if you could let us hear Samir and then we'll move into an open final discussion. Hello, my name is Samira Zak. I am a University of Maryland graduate student in the College of Education. Um, I am getting my master's in teaching teachers or teachers education so that I can further um, pass on the knowledge that I've gained over the years through the teachings of uh, Margaret Walker, who is my professor and mentor at the University of Maryland, and actually a former student of Maxine Green. So those teachings have been passed down from one professor to another and then to another. And in my doing, I hope to pass that on even further. Uh, currently, I teach middle school and high school at the Virtual Academy, the Montgomery Virtual Academy, which is the first online school of its kind within the county. And this groundbreaking school is uh, really a jump off point for maybe what could be the future of education and um, to be in that field and to be in this uh, this new era. It's really an exciting time. And I feel like as as a person who was taught under the teachings of Maxine Green, I have a special opportunity to to really embed these these teachings into the philosophy and the way that the school is run. So that we approach everything with an aesthetic education and a wide awakeness. We don't falter when we see something that might be uh, hard to talk about. We discuss all sorts of things and we find ways to bring it back, to ground these topics. I think one of the hardest things with um, education is that we almost wanna shelter uh, so much of what we is happening in the real world and pretend that it's not happening. But with Maxine, she embraced it. You know, she really taught me and uh, all of uh, the young teachers and, you know, former teachers of her, um, how to go about these conversations, how to discuss these things and and really make a, a moment for these for these young students and for these teachers that are being trained, um, a moment that lasts longer than just a fleeting thought. This is something that stays with you forever. And it's something that uh, has fundamentally changed the way I look at education um, for the better. I think that uh, with the books and the YouTube and all the different ways that Maxine has put her information out there, uh, the legacy will not only continue to be passed down, but it'll be shaped, um, it'll be something that shapes the way that education is looked at for years to come. And uh, I'm very honored and very happy to be a part of this, uh, this change and, and the, the next generation as we move forward. <laughs> As well, very well said. Does anyone have any questions for Samir? Samir is here. He is. Um, here. Uh, <laughs> David, can you um, get us back to the main room? There we go. Yes, ending on a high note of, of many high notes. <laughs> <laughs> Samir has optimism. <laughs> <laughs> Any, um, I just want to say that in, in our breakout room, Samir was talking about the advantages of the of using Zoom with many of these students since his entire school is is online. He says that it's been so inclusive of many students that have a, a lot of difficulty um, emotionally and, and physically coming into schools. 
and that he's found it extremely inclusive. Would you want to add to that, Samir? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, everyone has done such a great job of uh, giving me so much information, things that I can take and, and extrapolate from to turn into my own lessons. And um, part of that is the, the big thing that a lot of people have mentioned is this in person, you know, there, it's easy to make a connection when you're standing right in front of somebody. You can literally reach out and touch them. Uh, through a screen, it, there's many more complications that we have to put on top of that. Um, part of what I do is I like to let the kids understand that everything that they're feeling, everything that they are experiencing is real. You know, Don't just say like, oh, things are bad over in um, a certain area. And then we just go, okay, well, let's talk about the elements and principles of art now. Um, you know, you can't just leave a topic like that and just hang it out to dry. So uh, aesthetic education in the virtual academy is so important to reach out and experience these things, whether it be virtual or uh, if we can find a way to connect some. We've been trying to do more in-person things, but um, I think it's really helped me to teach better um, in this virtual environment, because when you can make yourself seem more personable, it doesn't matter where you are, you can still be with that person, you know, in, in their mind and in their heart and their, in their experiences. And I think that's, what's been the most fulfilling, um, nice. part of, uh, embracing this. Thank you. And I am here with my mentor, actually, Miss Margaret Walker over here, um, who's, <laughs> really fulfilled that legacy. Uh, I mean, the, the work that she does over at the University of Maryland, it, it is like groundbreaking. I mean, they, from building up the, the teacher's education and the arts department and all these other fields and bringing the arts to other parts of the teacher's courses, because a lot of times what happens is we want to teach educators to be very good educators in the most like straightforward way, but we forget that the creative mind is the highest thought process. Well, Margaret, here's your opportunity. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I just, can I just tell you how thrilled I am? You know, we talked about this at the, actually the very beginning of the conferences, somebody asked, did Maxine know how impactful her work was? And I think as teachers, we always question that, how impactful is the work that we do? And so I, as much as I use Maxine's work in everything that I do, and I teach her in my classes, I opened up the I opened opened up the, um, the the speakers list yesterday, and I saw Samir there, and I was just so thrilled because it it makes you realize that no matter how little I know about what impact the teaching has, and the people that I've learned from and I've passed on it's there and uh, there's, you know, the work is being done in the classrooms in the K through 12 settings. And so, so I mean, Samir, is, he's just a little rock star anyway. He was an undergrad <laughs> of ours, now he's a grad and I always call him a little extra. Um, but, if, but if he's saying it out loud, it's hap actually happening within others as well. And that's what's so exciting to me. Well, for, Maxine was a rock star too, by the way. So <laughs> good true. company. But it's, it's, it's a, a grandchild. It's like a legacy grandchild. Of exactly. <laughs> and it's a wonderful way to round out the day. And um, today has been a treasure trove. And um, Holly and I were texting each other. It's really been marvelous. Such a bounty of voices and, and giving multiple lenses of what Maxine's legacy is and how you're each approaching it. Um, we're definitely a new community in the making, and um, we definitely need to continue the conversation of sharing. So 